Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Hope all is well. A second offensive lineman hits the transfer portal from Colorado. The starting center, Van Wells, he made his announcement telling the fans at Boulder that he's going to be entering the transfer portal with two years left of eligibility. So we're going to talk about that. Stay tuned. Guys, please do me a favor. Before we get into this video, please give us a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also hit the bell notification so you can get updated on my latest content as it drops. All of that will be greatly appreciated by me. Hey guys, before we get started, do me a favor, go into the description section of this video. There you will find a list of all the players on the Colorado team that have YouTube pages. Make sure you check them out and subscribe today. All right, so Colorado's offensive lineman Van Wells hit the transfer portal this Saturday morning. The six foot two, 290 pounder came to Boulder a year before Deion Sanders took over and was one of the nine holdovers who stayed. Wells started the majority of the games under center this past year. He was part of CU's offensive line that allowed a total of 54 sacks. Now we're gonna get back to that 54 sack total in a second because there's something that is not really being talked about here. Now, Wells said, I wanna thank you all to the coaches who gave me the opportunity to play here at CU. Wells wrote in a statement, I appreciate all the love and support I received these past two years from the CU staff and most importantly the CU fan base. The relationship I built here will always be cherished. Thank you for the brotherhood we created and you guys will truly be missed. Now Wells, he's a native of Houston, Texas, was a three-star recruit as part of CU's 2022 class. He earned Houston Chronicle First Team All Greater Houston Honors as a senior at CE King High School. Colorado was the highest Power 5 offer with two Ivy League schools on his list. Wells is the second Buffalo's offensive lineman to enter the transfer portal in the past 24 hours, which signals a reboot coming. Sanders and his staff already needed to address the issue on offense and will need a few experienced players to anchor the line. There will be transfers coming via the transfer portal in a few days. It's not going to be a surge like last time this year, but will be significant. Yeah, it's not going to be a surge like last time, but it has to be significant. The 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 pickups, to see this year is going to be a little different. Now, last year when Coach Prime took over, to be fair, when he took over, because he had some things to attend to and finish up at Jackson State, by the time him and his staff was put together at Boulder, the transfer portal was already open, so they had to play catch up. This time, his staff, his recruiting staff, more importantly, they have been assembled way before this transfer portal has opened, so they're going to hit that transfer portal earlier than they did last year. So that's the important part to get these players. Now they have some players currently in Boulder right now trying to recruit them some high school players. One is a five star and one is a four star offensive lineman. They're trying to get them to flip from their previous commitments to come to Boulder. And that's going to be a very hard task. And we know that these players, not all the players are asking for money, but you know, these other programs are throwing money around. So that is a hurdle coach prime and his staff is going to have to um, overcome. Now, let me just um, go back to the 54 sacks for a minute because they're saying that these offensive linemen, they were part of the line that allow 54 sacks, which is true. But one thing that people keep leaving out is that Shador Sanders attempted a record amount of pass attempts. It was in a record amount. It was like the most in college football. And if he had cut those pass attempts down to, let's say, like Alabama's numbers, the sacks would have been the same. And then it was also talk that he hold on to the ball quite too long. And this is something that Shador has to learn in the Power Five. That window of opportunity closes faster at that level. The linemen at, on the, in the Power Five level are a lot faster than he faced when he was at Jackson State. So that window of opportunity closes very, 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 very um, quickly. So my question to you, the problems that they had this year, is it all on the offensive line? That's my question. You got to factor in the pass attempts and you also have to factor in maybe he held on to the ball quite too long. Also, you have to factor in this team was put together. They have to gel together and they didn't have that extended amount of time to do so. They had a very short window to do so to gel together. 
Sometimes these these situations take year, um, a couple years to develop here. And also, it could have been the play calling. It could have been a combination of everything. So you just can't put the blame on the offensive line. Okay, well, this is what we need. We need this, this, and this. But first, you have to look at, did the quarterback hold on to the ball too long? Did you factor in the pass attempts and all of the above? But here's the thing. In the transfer portal, they're going to have to go out and get experienced players that's ready to play right now. That's all. That's almost NFL, NFL ready. Excuse me, NFL ready. If they can't bring in some offensive linemen that they're not sure if they're going to start, like, okay, you're going to have to earn your position. No, you have to bring in experienced dogs that can start right now. Can they flip those players? That's my question to you. Like, for example, I gave the example of Bear Alexander. Now, Bear Alexander, he was on last year's Georgia's national championship team, and he decided to transfer to USC. And there was also another defensive lineman from Texas A&M. He decided to transfer to USC. Can they grab players like that? that can come on a team, they're stars and they're ready to start. They don't have to earn a position because they're dominant. Can they get those players and also will they have to pay for those players? How much do they have to pay? What is their budget like? So this is going to be very, very important because with all these players that are leaving, you know, the fan base at Colorado, they may have liked these players and they do, all these players lead the team and you can't put a product together that's going to go out and win at least seven or eight games, it's going to be a fail. The pressure is on Coach Prime right now. It definitely is. The, um, he has to win next year. This can't be a season like this year um, when you only win three or four games. He has to be bowl eligible next year or his plan is not going to look um, it's not going to look too good. And I'm just being real with you just looking at this right now. The media is going to tear him apart. He said he has a plan. And I also read another article where he said he believes that they're going to have a winning season in next year. No, you cannot believe. You have to know. You, you have to know we're going to win. Not believe. Not I believe. Or do you believe? No. The, if you have a plan and you said you got the dogs coming in, that means you guys are going to be ready to compete with the Alabamas next year. This is what I'm expecting here. Not I believe that we're going to win. Uh, no, we, we can't believe that we're... We, we, we have to know we're going to win. I know we're going to win. No believing or nothing. I we, we have to win. And that's the pressure that's on right now. And um, see, the reason why is college football is all about money. We all know this. It's all about what have you done for me lately. It's winning, winning, winning is the mentality. That is the um, bottom line here. And um, we're going to see what product that they put on the field this upcoming um, late August because th their first game is in late August. But I have a suspicion that a lot more players players are going to hit that transfer portal and then they're going to have their whole work cut out for them trying to bring in some dogs now like i said again it's very very important that they go out and get experienced players that's nfl ready now if you go out and get juco players you don't know what they're going to do until they actually get on your team until they actually get in the ball game you don't know what you're going to have i'm talking about a bear alexander that is proving at a bigger institution, you know what he can do. That's what they're going to have to get, folks, if they're going to win next year. What say you? That's my opinion. Drop your opinion below and let's talk about it. Guys, you know I'll see you next video. Peace. Thanks for watching, guys. But before you go, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell notification so you can get updated on my latest content as it drops. If you have any video ideas, feel free to leave a comment below. Take care.